Hi, everybody. Welcome to Ask the Amigos. This is a show where Aaron and I answer all of Discord's burning questions. And we kick things off with our good buddy, our pal, Christian Russell. He says, A Pawn Stars clip popped up on my YouTube. Some guy had an original Donkey Kong cabinet, expert certified as all original parts, in super condition. The guy, the expert reckoned about six to eight hundred dollars for it. Would you guys say that was about right? What a what a hilarious question for me, boat. Because I own an original Donkey Kong cabinet boat. I own one. Yes. Suck it, Pawn Stars. Uh, <clears throat> I paid seventy five dollars this bad boy boat back in the day. Uh, I do have all the original parts, but I did upgrade the ROM so we can play that crazy Donkey Kong 2. And I've also got mm -hmm. the high score saving gimmick in there. But I kept the ROMs. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say uh, that was a, a, a an apt bargain at six to eight hundred bucks. Donkey Kong, one of the most uh, one of the most manufactured arcade machines of all time, of all the times, along with your Pac-Mans and your Galagas and whatnot. I mean, I'd put Donkey Kong in that upper level. I don't mean in terms of quality, just in terms of the amount of those things that were made. Plus, you got to remember that Donkey Kong was bore as something to replace that horrible radar scope game that flopped. And so there's tons of those cats that were converted to Donkey Kong. So mm -hmm. you've got conversions to Donkey Kong, plus you've got the actual machines that were released exclusively for Donkey Kong. What you got there is a crap load of Donkey Kong. So, you know, really today, you could probably get a, a grand if you had a really good look at Donkey Kong, wouldn't you think, Boat? If you had a real nice one, I I think that this I think that this price is right on in today's marketplace. If you've got if it's in super condition, it's I mean I, I it might be like you said it might be a little bit low, but I would think somewhere closer to eight hundred dollars. Yeah, you, you could get if everything really looked mint. Now there are some versions of Donkey Kong. These are of course the the radar scope ones, which are your early versions. They'll have mm -hmm. uh, different colors. Different colored marquee, and you've also got your. I believe they had a. I, I don't. Did they have a cabaret of Donkey Kong? I'm not 100 percent sure about that, but I know they had a cocktail uh, mm -hmm. that will that fetches a, a, a decent price. But again, the Donkey Kong is a good game to collect because it's popular and it's um, available. So right. I would say six eight hundred bucks. I've seen a lot of crazy prices on that show. That's not the worst. Yeah, Chris Folds. He says, what are your thoughts on the modern phenomenon of infobesity, which is basically an overload of information in this modern age? You want to take you want to start off on this one, Boat? Yeah, I think it's easy to be overwhelmed with information. You know, we live in a society where all you have to do is open up a web browser and you can either read nothing but horrible news or read nothing but things that you agree with or read nothing but things that you disagree with. Uh, all you have to do is find the right source. And so uh, I think that everybody owes it to themselves to stop typing loudly and clicking on their very clicky keyboard. I muted myself, Smarty, but go ahead. No, you didn't, because I hear you. Yeah, you're on Skype, you knucklehead. I muted the actual feed. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Bam, there it is. But getting back to what you're saying, listen, information overload, that's a thing, man. You know, I've noticed over the years that everyone knows everything. It's not a bad thing, but it's a troubling thing. We know if there's a fire that destroyed a warehouse in Tanzania. We know if there's a flood in Guadalajara. We know everything. And when you get that sort of mass information, it can sort of bring you down. We didn't have this trouble back in the 70s because no one knew what was going on. You knew what was going on in your town. You knew a little bit about what was going on in the nation, but you had no idea what was going on in Antarctica or Australia, you know, or or Taiwan, you had no idea. So, or the politics of this, or the or the or the environmental repercussions of that, you had no idea. We are uh, continuously bombarded with information, and it can absolutely get to you. And so, you've got to make determinations on how much of that you want to to take in. Maybe you want to take a little separation for a while and not even watch the news or go to the areas of the web they're going to give you this information maybe you have to, maybe it's a good separation on the flip side having this information can make you a better citizen of the world because when you look at all the things that go on in the planet you know we're all on the same big chunk of rock hurtling through space so there should be some interconnection informationally we need to know what's going on in Tanzania or Taiwan or New Zealand because we're part of the issue 
that's happening down there. Maybe, maybe it's a weather thing. Maybe there's a, uh, maybe there's a manufacturing thing that we're exploiting someone somewhere else. So it's a mixed bag. All this information. But at the end of the day, I'd rather have access to the information than not have access to it. Yeah, yeah. You just got to you got you got to take it in and moderate. That's right. Yeah. Also, booze. I would say is and also booze. good. Yeah. Mitsuyama asks, "What are your top three animated TV shows?" Ooh, oh, oh. <laughs> jeez, that's whew. because that, that covers a lot of ground, boat. Yeah. Uh, listen, I'm going to reel some off here, okay? So. Because animated shows, I mean, that's every animated show, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to start off with the old standard. You can't go wrong with the Looney Tunes. Those things were funny. They were clever. You had Mel Blanc in there doing all the voices. You had all the, you know, all the great artists that put those together all over those years. A, a tremendous uh, uh, body of work uh, for those Warner Brothers cartoons. I'm also going to go, and this is a pretty generic boat, but I'm going to go with it because I thought it was great, it was the Batman the Animated Series. Mm -hmm. Just a yeah. tremendous, uh, a brilliant collaboration of, of geniuses to put these things together. The only really great thing to come out of those original Batman films, which I wasn't real fond of, was the animated series where they took just enough out of those to, to compile this series. They used that as the backbone, uh, uh, the world, the backbone to to make this brilliant series, well-written. They improved on the comics in almost every way. They brought back characters that were basically forgotten in the comic books, mm -hmm. including uh, uh, characters like Doctor Strange, for example. And I don't mean... I mean Doctor Hugo Strange, not Doctor Strange from Marvel. Uh, and they created characters like Harley Quinn that became big-time players. She didn't exist before that show was, uh, on, was uh, on television. Just a great show. The third pick... And we're talking, I mean, because I could go back to the original Tom and Jerry cartoons uh, or the Tex Avery stuff. It's all great. I love all that stuff. In fact, I probably would say, if I'm going to pick a third thing, it would probably be something from the Tex Avery era. It's hard to pin down a company on that. But, like, your classic Tom and Jerry's, your Droopies, those cartoons, they were beautifully animated, but they were clever. You had to be clever when you were using those sort of... That sort of relationship with Tom and Jerry or Droopy, all those characters. I love those. So I guess I'd go for third. I would go with the Tex Avery stuff uh, uh, overall. But, I mean, you could put a lot of stuff in there. You know, I love the Gargoyles. I love the Exo Squad. Those are both great. I love Superman, the animated Supermans, the Justice Leagues, which those were all sort of spawned from the original Batman. What, what, are, you, what are your thoughts on, the, on that, that particular subject, Boat? Um, <clears throat> it's really hard because you've got all of these different eras. And they yeah. almost don't seem like they could be compared with each other. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, my favorite cartoon growing up was probably Hey Arnold. Have you ever watched Hey Arnold before? Is that on Nickelodeon? It was on Nickelodeon. No. Okay. So that's probably my favorite. Uh, I really, really like Homestar Runner, which was an internet cartoon series. Um, I will agree with you, Batman, the animated series, just, I don't think there's ever been a show that's aired on regular TV. That's been an animated show. That's had that degree of quality and that degree of maturity. Um, because it was a, you know, it was a superhero show, but if you watch it, I mean, it could have been a primetime drama. I mean, there was nothing kiddy about Batman. It the debuted in primetime, by the way. Yeah, it did. But yeah. it, but it, I mean, it regularly aired, you know, after absolutely. I, I believe that. Um, when it comes to, uh, like anime stuff, uh, I'm a big fan of Samurai Champloo. Yeah. I didn't I'm even think about that. I do. I'm, you're right. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, I like Cowboy Bebop. Um, my favorite is a little known series, uh, called Run With The Wind, which is like a, an eight part mini series. Um, but, uh, but again, the, I'm not a huge fan of the older stuff like you are. Um, I mean, I'll watch it, but it's not, I think it's because I didn't really grow up watching a ton of it because when I was coming of age, there was like this new crop of cartoons, like the stuff that you grew up with was still around, but that was my old stuff. So stuff like justice league and stuff like that, to me, that was like old stuff. And then the new stuff was all of the Nickelodeon cartoons and stuff like, and the Disney afternoon stuff like tailspin and all that stuff. So, um, but it's all good. I like cartoons a lot. You know, there's, it's hard to have a bad cartoon. Even the, even the poorly animated Hanna-Barbera cartoons are still kind of fun. 
Yeah. So. I mean, you know, and I draw, it's funny, I draw a distinct line between anime and cartoons. And it didn't, mm-hmm. when they asked that question, I didn't even think about anime because you're right. Listen, the, the Japanese art form of anime has to be acknowledged for its brilliance. You know, I got into anime in, in, early in my college days. I, I really, the first thing I ever saw was Speed Racer and Star Blazers. Those are the first things I ever saw. But, I mean, I really got into it uh, in my college days. And then later on, as my uh, tastes were a little more mature, you're right. Cowboy Bebop and uh, uh, stuff like Samurai Champloo uh, and uh, Ghost in the Shell, Standalone Complex... Uh, were just brilliant, uh, brilliant shows. So those guys have to be dodged. But I really put those in sort of a... And really, there you could compare those shows to the Batman the Animated Series and get away with it. But comparing mm-hmm. those shows to stuff like the Flintstones or uh, or the Looney Tunes, I mean, that's a, that's a whole different level of... I mean, it's more adult, you know, but in each one, that's not necessarily better, but they're di- totally different. That's right. one of the problems that anime's had in the States. It's not so much now as it was when I was a kid, but this was a huge controversy. Is that everyone assumed that everything that was animated was for kids. And mm-hmm. clearly, if you saw stuff like Akira or Legend of the Overfiend, this stuff was not for children. You wouldn't want to right. get your kids anywhere near this stuff. They'd go crazy, you know? So right. there's those are, there's are more adult films versus stuff like Tex Avery, the Flintstones. Uh, and those are two separate genres of, of the same sort of animation media. But, yeah, I love all that stuff. You picked some real good stuff there, but well done. Lobsterminator asks, what are some artists or bands that are mainly known for a few big hits that have less known back catalogs? That have great lesser known back catalogs. You're the master of this. What do you got? Um, the first one that comes to mind is Fountains of Wayne. Uh, do you remember that song, Stacy's Mom? Yeah, cool video. Okay, too. that song, that song, I hate that song. Oh. I hate it. I think it's, I think, I just think it's a dumb song. Their lead singer passed away recently, didn't he? Oh, I, I to be honest with you, I don't know. I, I hope not. But I've been a Fountains of Wayne fan since way, way back, and I was glad that they got famous, kind of, you know. But their back catalog is great, much better than that song. Another band that comes to mind, they might be Giants. Everybody knows Particle Man and Istanbul and those kinds of songs, but they might be Giants. Awesome, awesome back catalog. How about you, man? They had a lot of interesting stuff, uh, they might be Giants. I'm going to go with, you know, for you, to, for you to get into a back catalog and know it well enough to say, like, this is the band, you have to have been a fan of that band, irregardless of whether they did well or not, right? Because yeah. if, if they had done well and you'd heard them, you probably wouldn't know about their back catalog. Uh, the ones that come to mind instantly uh, were, are uh, the Indigo Girls, which really only had one hit, uh, which mm-hmm. was uh, Closer to Fine. They are tremendous live performers, and they've done a lot of great stuff. And so I like the Indigo Girls. I've always been a fan of theirs from way back. Now, I don't like everything they've ever done, but I've, I like a lot of their stuff, and a lot of their back catalog is really good. They come to mind uh, right away. This is a weird one here, Boat, but another band that surprisingly has a lot of good stuff on their albums is Men Without Hats. Uh, mm. Everyone knows the safety dance, but they mm-hmm. had a lot of interesting stuff uh, back in the day that I enjoyed that I, mm-hmm. it's fun to go back and listen to. So I would put those two right up there at the top. You know, there's probably others that come, that, that, but you know, I'm, I have graduated from the land of the people that just listen to whole albums. Like, those days mm-hmm. are over for me. Right. They weren't always. I mean, there was a time where I listened to whole albums and just loved what they were doing. But now I just, mm-hmm. I'm just i your classic, like, whatever they've got on. We just listen to right. various radio stations that listen to what they've got. So, yeah. uh, you know, I, I there was a time where I could have named more, but that's all I got rough top of my head. I think, those are, I think those are solid answers. Yeah. Next up, Paul, a.k.a. Hermsky, asks, Have you ever been in a car accident or had a near miss? Yes, both. Uh, I have been... Uh, let's see, I was in a car accident with my buddy Rich and his dad where they, we got uh, hit from the side, uh, and it wasn't too bad. I've also been involved in an accident where my I was driving barefoot. Mm. Uh, my foot slipped off. If this is a, I don't know if I've ever told this boat. I was my parents were going out of town, and so this was going to be my first high school home party. You mm. know, I was very excited. I was coming home from school from NEC when I was going to uh, school there, and I was at the old, uh, you know, the farm, the farm supply place there 
right down like you're heading towards Cologne. You know the one I'm yeah, talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting there stopped waiting to pull out because I just dropped off Rich at his house. And I was turning around and I was driving barefoot because that's what we do up here. And it was real hot. I had no air conditioner. My foot was real sweaty. It slipped off the gas, the brake, punched the gas, and I popped out in the traffic and popped the oh. bumper off a of Mercedes. Oh, my gosh. Yes. I was... <laughs> and so my parents were leaving that night. And so I had to come home and tell them. And I trust me, I waited and waited. And I said, listen, <laughs> I'd already made the party plans. People were coming. Mm -hmm. And I, I said, listen, by the way, you may hear something about me <laughs> popping the bumper off this Mercedes. And I was, I will say, I stood up. I said, listen, it was my fault. I told them what happened. They were not happy. And so mm -hmm. they canceled their trip. The problem oh. is I already had people coming over, and this is before the age of cell phones, so people all evening just kept showing up <laughs> at the house. I'd be like, get out of here. And I'd try to... <laughs> so that happened. Did so anybody, I... get like two six-packs, be like, yeah. Yes. That, out of they'd come out of the car screaming, party. <laughs> no party, no party. Go, go, go. But that happened. Yeah, so I have popped the bumper for Mercedes, boat. Oh. What about you? You know, I, I just turned 40 oh. last week. I have never been in a car accident. Oh, knock man. On knock wood. on wood. Uh, I've had one. Pro well, no, I take it back. When I was coming back from Mud Mountain, I forgot about this. I had a uh, I had a car uh, sort of minorly sideswipe me on the interstate. Yeah. Uh, like it was one of those things where he passed me too close and he just kind of grazed the side of the car. And it was cool. This was a totally West Virginia thing. Where like I pulled over, he pulled over behind me, and he's like, "Man, just just get an estimate. Tell me how much it is. Here's my number, and we won't involve insurance." And so I got an estimate, called him up. He met me at the McDonald's. He wrote me a check, and that was that. Yeah, so that is, you know, that's yeah. happened to me. I was on my way to Marshall. I got rented by some chicks, you know, and I just looked at the damage, and the bumper was a little bit dented. I was like, mm -hmm. "Eh, just go on." That, that, so I've done that, and then also, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, you get into all sorts of scrapes and stuff that you, I, I, people are lucky if they hit me, because I don't really care about my car, and mm -hmm. so if it's not that bad, if the car still works, I'm like, eh, hey. so I've gotten yeah. sideswiped and rear-ended. When we went to uh, see Pat in Houston, we rented a Jeep Commander, okay, this was an awesome Jeep, and the second we got to Houston downtown, we read a red light. And this chick was putting on makeup, but she slammed into our rear end of this Jeep. Mm. Right? We looked out. We looked at the Jeep, and the Jeep looked like it had never been touched. It's the Jeep <laughs> freaking Commander. It's not a regular <laughs> Jeep. It's the Commander. And so this chick, with her makeup, like she had a lipstick that just went like, Bruh. it looked like Glass of the Mohicans. She, we looked at her, and we were like, man. And she just took off. She didn't even stop to get insurance. It's the way they do it, you know, in Houston, I guess. <laughs> Yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah, you're going to get in these little scrapes. As long as mm -hmm. no one's brutalized, I don't feel like it's yeah. that big a deal. Yeah, yeah. And so, but, I, yeah, I mean, that, like the chat was saying, the guy could have gave me a fake number. It could have been anything. Yeah. But, you know. Most people uh, are honest. when it, Most people of, are honest, yeah. yeah. All right. At least most people in West by God. Um, so, uh, Paul has another follow-up question. Oh, he man. Says, was there a game when you were a child that you could never get on or get anywhere with that you went back to recently with a lot more success changing your impressions? You want to tackle that one? Uh, I already know what you're going to say if you because you've answered a similar question. I'm interested in my mind. I've got I've, I've guessed your number. But uh, what I'm going to say is um, Hudson's Adventure Island, a.k.a. Wonder Boy. Um, when I was a kid, I didn't realize that you needed to eat fruit to survive. I thought it was just like Mario where you bebop to the levels and I would die for no reason. And so I, and I got so frustrated with the game. I liked the game. But, uh, when I went back to it on the EverDrive a couple months ago, I realized that you needed to eat fruit to survive and I got a lot farther and I had a, a good time with it. So, you know, really, I don't know what you had in my, in your mind for me because I don't, nothing jumps, nothing leaps to mind. Dragster. Yes, well, it's said that you have to answer for me, but you're right. <laughs> that would be that would definitely qualify. And and you know, I think in in the back of my head somewhere, I vaguely recall figuring it out back in the day. But I remember when we did that ARG, 
That was what the was that the second one we that did. Was number two. Yeah. I remember because the guy that had the world championship had just been stripped. That was what was <laughs> right. amazing about it. Of all the weeks, and, and and you're right. That's the kind of I love games where like you sit down with the joystick to play the game, and you start the game, and the game unfurls, and you just sit there like, what the hell just happened? That's Dragster. And That's it's it. amazing. How many cartridges did they sell? Can you imagine people coming home and think they're going to drive a Dragster? And they're just like, right. what the hell is this? we got no idea. Yeah. Uh, but yes, Dragster. That's an excellent. Thank you, Boat, for remembering for me. I agree with you. Yes. <laughs> Mitsuyama asks, you're being sent back in time to 1800s America, and you're never coming back. It's a one-way <laughs> trip. Oh, God. Okay. Where's this going? Jeez. <laughs> You can take one object from the modern world with you to help you survive or to barter with or whatever. Something you can hold. What do you bring and why? I mean, you're not going to barter with Jack, all right? Because, you know, listen, first of all, you know as well as I do that if we went back in time, whatever cool thing we took would be instantly taken from from someone (laughs) bigger and meaner. (laughs) <laughs> okay, so if I've got time to think, okay, what am I going to do to not get murdered? Okay? Because, I mean, my first instinct is to take, like, a laptop or something. But, I mean, what are you going to plug it into? You know, <laughs> you, any electronic device is going to run out of jack pretty mm-hmm. quick, right? So you could throw that out. So it's got to either be something you could recharge from a, uh, from the sun, you know, and, have, and you have to take that with you. And I don't think I have anything that will do that. I doubt you do. You know, that you no, want to take with you. I don't believe you. in solar power. It's a so, myth. <laughs> okay, fair enough. So you'd have to take something. I'm sitting here thinking it would probably be something like a taser or something. Something you could... <laughs> I mean, it had to be something like super violent. This is the 1800s. you got to so knock you, some you suckers want, you out. Want a solar, you want a solar-powered taser. Or a cattle prod or something like that where you could... <laughs> what would you take? I mean, it's real tough. Well, actually, I thought of two things, and the chat immediately thought of them at the same time. All right. So I'm not stealing your answer, chat, but I did take the first thing I thought was medicine, like like penicillin, because if you're going for the rest of your life, you're going to get sick and you're going to need antibiotics. Okay. That's not going to protect the you when se- Cowboy Joe calks up and wants to beat the tar out of you. Then you, you the, I got penicillin. And I'm thing, like, I don't care. The second thing I'd take is the biggest lump of gold that I can find. Because people understand gold in the 1800s. Then you live like a king. I just thought of something. Okay, man. I would take the biggest block of heroin I could find. Oh, that's a good... Yeah, you could start the drug trade. You start could it off be right. the number one, and you have to hide it instantly. Like, right. bury it somewhere. Mm-hmm. And You'll you, balloon, and, balloon down the gullet. Now, the problem is that I have to study how heroin works. Because despite the West Virginia's... Uh, unfortunate <laughs> the reputation. Of the world. I don't know how to do heroin. Like I don't know what you do. <laughs> Clearly, you don't just lick the rock. You know. <laughs> I mean, maybe that works. I don't know. You know. So I have to do some research. But it, hair, or maybe a big thing of cocaine, something big wad of drug, and mm-hmm. then take that back. You, you, when you said take penicillin, I was like, listen, that that's no good. But if you took something you could sell, because hey, listen euphoric antics are going to work everywhere, right? That's Even true. back then. They know no time. They know, you know no did, season. You've never watched Deadwood, but no, one, there's not. a guy, the guy that owns the bar, and he's a big wheel in town, is this guy named Al Swearingen, and anytime someone does him a favor, he goes, give him a ball of dope. That's what he says. Give him a ball <laughs> of dope. So I would be that guy. I would be like, listen, I need that house and that horse, and maybe that chick. And say, give him a ball of dope. And you, just, and you give it to him. Yeah, that's how you would do it. Mm. So dope. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, Pixels of Dawn asks. He says, "What sport do you know next to nothing about, but would like to learn if you had the time?" I got this one. All okay. right, all right. I watched the. Uh, um, you know, right when I got the TV, I'm looking through the channels, and there's a, there's a show talking about um, all these different houses. It's one of those deals where these rich people in England go out and try to find their dream house. Okay, okay. buckets of cash, right? Yeah. And they go to this thing, and it's like the, you've got. Uh, uh, well, I'm trying to think exactly what they called this, but basically, it's a it's a weird form of like uh, I think it's like soccer or something that no one plays. Oh, it's tennis. It's called real. Long, are you talking about long, no, real tennis? Right? No, no, real tennis. Real tennis. Uh, yeah. Real tennis. And there's only like six courts in all of England that have it. Right. That's what I would want to be the master of because 
it looks like something that me and you would come up with after a, a, a binge. <laughs> it's like you hit the ball here and it goes into a net. If you hit the ball over here, it rings a bell. And this is a this is shoot. It rings a bell and you get a score. And it's played indoors, so it'd be nice and cool. Did you ever did you ever make up games like that? Like when you're just hanging out with your friends in like the living room or the basement, you're like, Okay, I'm gonna take this wadded up sock and if it if it ricochets off the ceiling <laughs> And then hits the table. That's two points. We used to play. We had a frisbee, and and I had these two trees that grew next to each other. So when we were loading up Atari games at my buddy's house, it took so long to load them off cassette. We would go out back and play discs of Tron. And the goal was to take the <laughs> to take the frisbee, and you had to throw it between these two trees. While another sucker had another frisbee trying to block it. That was the game. <laughs> That's awesome. I was, I was, yeah, that, that yes, I do have some experience in that. Yes. <laughs> what about uh, you? For me- I would I would like to learn um, probably go. I think go would be a noble a noble game to learn. That's not really a sport. No, it's, it's not a, a sport. Can you name a sport? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm I sort of mastered most of the sports. I you mean, have not what? <laughs> Pick any um, sport. What about cricket? What about oh wait? What about darts? We yeah. love darts. Yeah. I would probably I would probably spend some time mastering the sport. You and Jackie darts. Wilson could get together yeah. and throw darts. That'd yeah. be a dream, darts, wouldn't it? And get darts, second up. place cricket. Yeah. You know, in all honesty, bar type games like the pub games that we see from back in the me and you would be all over that. Oh yeah, we're tubby, you know, dupus types. We'd like to drink. It'd be perfect for us. When I had COVID and I was on death's door, when I felt yeah. like I was on death's door, yeah. regardless if I was or if I wasn't, that was literally the only thing. I would put those on, the Yorkshire pub games, and the, I would watch six or seven of those That's every the night. best <laughs> thing I ever saw. Yeah. And he'd be like, yeah. let's go over to Jackie. He's covering the tabletop plumper nickel. It's like, what the hell? And it'd be a guy that he's the master of plumper nickel. <laughs> Where did this guy learn that? I don't know. You know, but I love that. Those are great. Yeah. We need yeah, those in the states. That would be awesome. Yeah. Uh, Dave Velociraptor asks: When you're in a hot location, is it important to wear a hat to avoid getting heat exhaustion? <laughs> you want to cover this one, boat? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you. I, you can wear a hat and get heat exhaustion. I can tell you that. Were what you, you should one? not do. What you should not do is come back from a hike and sit down to an outdoor lunch of sushi and ranch dressing and then wash it down with some beer and ice cream. You're an idiot. And then buddy. lay in the sun for two and a half hours. <laughs> what what in God's name were you thinking, Boat? Boat had know. Boat I'm recently had mind. heat exhaustion, in case you're wondering what we're talking about. And that's what he did in Arizona <laughs> on one of the hottest days of the year. Yeah. It was one sixteen. What made like, you what? think that having raw fish was a good idea? <laughs> <laughs> it was, yeah. Well, we were at the grocery store, and uh-huh. I was like, boy, we're on vacation. I should have something special, something I don't normally eat. Uh-huh. And I figured, what could go wrong with grocery store sushi? It's, pro- it's probably the best. <laughs> and then I got some olives and some ranch dressing. Oh, as sort some of olives were in there? <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. Did at any point, you did never once thought to you that this might be a bad idea? Well, yes. I'll tell you at what point it did when I felt like I was starting to get ready to die. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to tell you on that, Boat. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Quite... So don't do that. That's that's Boat's tips to avoid getting heat exhaustion. Don't do any of that. <laughs> also, just stay out of the heat. That's another thing. <laughs> Go lay in the sun. It was 114, <laughs> for God's sakes. Just avoid Arizona. Yeah. Avoid Arizona. Yes. Yes, I agree. All right. Explorer asks, this is a question for me. Did you play short a short hike any further after the stream you did? What were your thoughts on the game? Explorer, yes. I completed uh, a short hike after that stream, and it was one of the, my, the best games I've played in years. Uh, if you don't know what a short hike is, it's a very uh, sort of calming game where you're basically just you walk around an island and you find feathers and you talk to various NPCs. It's sort of like Animal Crossing, but it does have a linear story that you can beat. Uh, there's there's secrets you can find. And it looks like it's got the aesthetic of an early PS1 3D title. It's weird that we've gotten to the point now in the retro scene where people are starting to emulate that as like a throwback look, but that's what it does. Because that's horrible. So, 
That look yeah, is it horrible. Does. It looks like butt. This yeah, game sounds like an incredibly dull boat. <laughs> You go around well, collecting the... feathers? Do you get to fly yeah. or anything? Yeah, so you are you're 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 a, a a lady owl or you're like a lady bird and you're you're collecting feathers, I think, so you can fly. You are, you're just trying to get to the top of the mountain, I think. I can't really remember what the end game is in a short hike, but you learn something about yourself. Clearly it left a depression on you, which you just played it a couple weeks ago. You don't remember anything about it. This has been two years ago. Oh, I see. This has been two years ago. So listen. Um, but yes, no. I highly recommend a short hike. And according to Chris Folds, the makers of a short hike are uh, making a new game, and it's going to be awesome. The so. makers of a short hike are clearly on Quaaludes, boat. Let me, let me, <laughs> if I may, offer a counter game to this. What you do is you load up Walker, okay, on the Amiga. You grab your mouse and you gun suckers down. Now that's a game. <laughs> There's no feather collected or going to the top of the mountain. You gun down suckers. That's the game. Carry on. All right. What, Jonah what says, you know how blood clots and cuts and wounds automatically heal? Well, I just had a business idea. You guys want in? Let's manufacture a natural and organic substance that achieves the exact same clotting effect and stick it in a tube and sell it. People can just apply it to heal all sorts of ailments, cuts, and injuries. What do you think, Aaron? Is this some sort of spam message? <laughs> what? what is the question? Do I want in? No. Do you I'm want not going to make no. a weird drug with one of our weird Discord. Who wrote this? <laughs> that was Jonah, a.k.a. Jonah. Simulant. <laughs> Listen, Stick to the magazine, Jonah. Simulant is clearly... Waters. He's taking his own gimmick too far. He's making simulants. No, no. We're not gonna make do you want boat to manufacture your clotting mechanism? He can't even eat food. He just almost died in the sun. No, no. Paul, aka Hermsky, asks, is there a game that you loved and were impressed with during your youth that later in life thought, nah, what was I thinking? Got anything on that one? A lot of games, really, if I'm being honest with myself. A lot of the games that I played when I was a kid and I thought ruled, I go back to, and it's 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 hard to go back. One of the games is NES Play Action Football. Um, I played that for years when I was a kid, and now, man, it runs so slow and it's so ponderous. Uh, that's, that's definitely one of them. Um, do you got anything off the top of your head? You know, here one of the one of the downfalls of being a hideous, uh, filthy, rotten, stinking pirate is I never really played anything that much because I had all the world was my oyster, and mm. so there was no game that I fell in love with. And I look back now, I'm like, man, that game is not nearly as good. I will say, when we covered Neuromancer in the uh, uh, on the Amigos, I thought to myself, man. As much as I love this game, it is hideously ugly. It is an ugly game with horrible sound. And they've mm. made minimal effort to port that to the Amiga. And I was, so that one comes to mind instantly. Another I one think, I played I'm a sure, lot was, Do, was Larry Burr vs. Dr. J. And I like that game. It's another one, though. It is one weird-looking game. And I, thought to myself, I, played a, I played this a lot. And these two weird noodle-armed freaks... Oh, no. <laughs> that were playing basketball. I mean, they don't look anything like Larry Bird, Doctor J. But I mean, I played a lot of it. But man, that's the funny the thing is, horrible. like when you when you read the docs on that game, they're like, we analyze these players, we oh. copied their moves. <laughs> that was a selling point back in the day. Yeah, it's like you analyze their players. Are they the Are they olive oil? Are they the weakest? <laughs> their arms are are way for thin. Could you not give them two pixels of arms? <laughs> Um, what, okay, I, uh, there's a couple more that I thought of. Uh, Atari 2600 Pac-Man, when I was a kid, I thought that game ruled. Oh, that was and the was, laughing stock of video games when it came and out. And I was disappointed when I got the Atari 8-bit version, even though it is a better version, because it didn't have the cool sound effects that I liked. Uh, 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 <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> <yep>. <laughs> exactly. Uh, also, Atari 2600 Defender, I really liked when I was a kid. Yeah, it's and pretty that, good port, I thought. Yeah, but it's it's sort of a it's it's sort of a flicker fest. Um, what is it on the Atari? What do you want? That's true. That's true. That's true. All right. Uh, let's see. Batman asks, "What's your favorite Dennis Wheatley novel?" I'll let you take this one. Boy, how to choose? I like them all. 
Listen, I don't know who that is. I'll be honest with you. But who is Dennis Wheatley? I, I don't I don't know either. I'm gonna look him up either. right now. So you've never heard of this guy. No. Let's see. I mean, the thing is he might have wrote some awesome stuff. Wheatley. Uh, that's close enough. Let's see what he wrote here. Hey, I spelled it right, Boat. I got that going for me. Uh he wrote a lot of occult stuff. That's not too bad. Uh he wrote uh let's see here. The Forbidden Territory, The Devil mm. Rides Out. That's a occult romance. <laughs> I kind of want to read that now. Listen, I don't know who this is, but it, this I, I mean, obviously, he's my kind of guy. He looks awesome. He's your it's classic like, old British white guy in a suit with a bunch of medals pinned to him. So he won a bunch of, he won a bunch of awards mm. for something, and he's standing in front of a bookcase, and he's looking at you like you're an idiot. So that's my maybe, kind of, I, I like that. Maybe he's like a H.P. Lovecraft meets the Harlequin romance series. Oh, man. I like it. Girl <laughs> meets freak. Yeah, apparently in the chat, he's very well known across the pond. I've heard The Devil Rides Out, but that's the only thing I've heard of amongst this, amongst his works here. Uh, Flack says, what genre do you never plan on revisiting? Text adventures, point and click games, something else? Yeah, all those. <laughs> <laughs> Those are good choices, Flack. Text adventures. Listen, I was not keen on these back when they were prevalent, and I'm still not keen on them. I don't have the imagination, I guess, or the patience. RPGs, eh, maybe in you know, a mixed bag, depending on which one you got. Uh, I'll tell you the uh, the the real complicated stuff, real complicated uh, like flight sims and stuff. Okay, let's break it down. I like stuff for dumb guys. I don't want a lot of controls. I don't want a lot of stuff to memorize. I like to keep it simple. That's there's my answer. I, I will I will say any genre that requires you to make your own map, I will never revisit. <laughs> You're out. That's it. I'm out. I'm out. Um, you can leave the graph <laughs> paper at home. Yeah. Uh, but however, that. this is this this whole question is a lie because we're gonna I'm sure we're gonna revisit tons of all these games in the future because of the very nature of our work, which is doing a podcast the thing is when when violently forced to play these games <laughs> i do occasionally enjoy them that's the one thing about our show that i like like i would never play for a bill's tomato game or something like i would not gonna play that but when mm -hmm. someone violently forces me to play it well heck i kind of enjoyed that i go back to it occasionally so that's a yeah. good thing boat uh barkbit asks how often do you throw away something that you've kept for ages uh thinking i'll never need this only to need it the next week. Well, if I may, I never... I I can think of maybe three times in my life I've thrown stuff away. <laughs> it was when, when I moved to Kentucky, when I moved from Kentucky, and when I got rid of the old ar the old building out here to get rid of the, rid of the mm -hmm. arcade, and mm -hmm. I threw away stuff that I have kept forever. One of the things I threw away was an AE, a WWE 64 Sound Blaster Gold. I would kept this thing forever. Now it's worth its weight in gold. Mm. I, anytime, anything that comes along with cabling or mm -hmm. old cards, ISA, uh, ESA, Visa, all these old PC cards, power supplies. I've got hordes of hordes of boxes full of this stuff. And the the number one reason I keep them is because the second I ever get rid of any of this stuff, I need it. And so mm. I'm much like what he said. I keep everything. I just try to pile it somewhere where it's out of the way. I throw stuff away all the time. Well, I don't, I don't throw stuff away all the time, but a lot of, like usually once a year, I do a sweep and I sell tons of stuff and I throw away tons of stuff. Are you and forcing I would it on say, me sometimes? And yeah, and if it's if it's something that I think you would enjoy, then I force it upon you. Now wait a minute. Um, no, sometimes you just give me stuff you know I don't want. But you what? give it to me That's anyway. That's never happened. Yeah, okay, all let's... the time. I'll just and you don't even tell me you're giving it to me. Hey, Aaron, there's some crap in your car. What? Where did that come from? <laughs> Listen, I've only done that five or six he times. He stops let's by in the dead of night and just drops stuff into my car. <laughs> Why don't I lock that thing? <laughs> um, I would say probably twenty five percent of the time, uh, there's stuff that I I wish that I had. But it's all stuff that is like easily replaceable through Amazon or eBay. So uh, yeah, yeah, I money. usually just rebuy it when I want it. Yeah. Listen, so. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna invoke the name. That's the king of hoarding crap. That's the Chud, our the good chud, buddy Chad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. This guy's got a big house. And he's got a big house on a big town on the other side of the tracks, and it's full of classic PC stuff. He's got cases. He's got power supplies. He's got old floppy drives. He's got CD-ROMs. He's got cable to beat the band. Old motherboards. Do you need a modem? He's got them. Do you need weird <laughs> interface cards? He's got them. He has everything. It's stored in the bowels of his house. I mean, literally, mm. it's in the mm. walls. It's in the attic. It's in weird closets behind stairs. <laughs> He's got tons of stuff. And I keep telling him, like, listen, you're sitting on a gold mine, pal. You know, mm -hmm. and of course, the Chudley, the only thing that keeps him from making money is his lasery. He's too <laughs> too lazy to get the stuff out. It drives me bananas, but he's got tons of stuff. One of these days, we'll have to get his permission to do a, you know how LGR and 8-Bit Guy, they they went to that huge uh, warehouse? Yeah. We should do like a tour of the Chud's yeah. abode. Yeah, you, no kidding. He'll never give you that permission, by the way. That will never happen. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um Pajaco6502 asks, what is the one joystick or controller to rule them all? Well, what do you have to say about that? Because I've got one right here. I'm going to go with this bad boy right here. I know this is not a popular choice among the retro community, but the PS4 stick is the uh, ultimate in terms of flexibility. Because, you know, you've got the analog sticks, you've got a decent D-pad, you've got plenty of buttons. Even if you've got a weird thing that requires a mouse, you've got the touchpad there. That thing is an abomination. Listen, here we go. I got. I, I'm gonna tell you something. I got it right here. Now I don't have. I don't have my dead flesh version. Here, yeah. But this is the Epix 500 XJ, the crown jewel of. Take it in, everybody. The crown jewel of joysticks. It's right here. Why do I have it at my near hand? Because I use it all the time. It's gold, solid gold money. They never made a better joystick. Listen to that clicking, hot clicking action, folks. When it comes to your old school gamery, this is your bad boy. By the way, you'll notice there's no chew marks on this. Because anyone that would chew the top of their joystick is some sort of weird freak. Listen, mode. it's not rubber. I only <laughs> chew on rubber. <laughs> that doesn't make me feel better, Boat. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Paul, a.k.a. Hermski, asks... Have either of you ever mastered the Rubik's Cube? <laughs> have you ever known? Have you seen us or seen the show to ask that question? No! We're <laughs> idiots! We don't know how to do that. <laughs> I've taken the stickers off of them and put it in the right spot to look like you King know, Dong. That's it. It's funny. When I was a kid, you always saw Rubik's Cubes around, right? Like, you go to... People no! would have them in their what? backpacks. No, what? Yeah. Oh, I thought you said they were round. You're saying they, no, they no, were no. They were round. always they were always around. Yes. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. I never knew anybody that could solve them. Now, as a middle school teacher, when I go into the into the cafeteria after school to wait for the buses, all you see are rows and rows of kids that are solving these things in 2.2 seconds. What a bunch of geeks! You mean kids are sitting around today and they're playing with these things in 2021? Absolutely. Have they heard of a Game Boy? Would you Listen, school these kids? For God's sakes! The, it's it's all and it's it's just another product of the internet where you can become an expert on anything by watching a YouTube video. Because I'm sure that a Rubik's cube for somebody other than myself who has no intelligence, you can figure out how to solve one of these things. And now everybody knows how to do it. So the the cat's out of the bag. And now it's not can you solve it? It's how fast can you solve? Listen, it. Listen, so. I've seen people they oil them up. And it's like, go, and they go like, blah, 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 and, they, and they solve them real quick, mm -hmm. like they're King Dong. Mm -hmm. Listen, I'm not impressed, okay? That thing's been out for decades, okay? Yes, you can solve a Rubik's Cube. Can I solve one? No, right? But to solve a Rubik's Cube in two seconds, that means this geek had to sit around for years in a, alone in a room in his basement like a dork, sitting there f screwing with his thing. Do you want to spend that much time working on a little handheld puzzle for the 80s? That's an indictment of how pathetic and lonely you are. I'm not buying it. Wow. Harsh That's right. I'm, hey, Harsh I'm calling words. it like I see it. Go outside. The sun's out, kid. Go out and look at a girl. You know what I'm saying? Get out of there. Flack says, as a child who was forced to eat spam and eggs, what kind of food did your grandparents prepare for you when you visited as a kid? My granny had a, 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 a plethora of delicious food items, offerings. She made a great uh, pot of spaghetti, but she also made me oatmeal. We've talked about that in the past. I loved her oatmeal. It was really good. Mm -hmm. She would also make, like, uh, what do they call those things where it's like uh, 
it's like peanut buttery, but it's got like a uh, coconut in it. You know, like haystacks or whatever, caramel, whatever you know what I'm talking about. Those were mm. great. She made all sorts of candy and stuff. Grannies, my granny from back in the day knew all the secrets of canning, you know, that mm. stuff, uh, preserves, mm-hmm. you know, all that jive that we don't know now. So all the food at Grannies was top shelf all the time. Yeah, I my neither one of my grandparent my grandmothers were uh fans of cooking. They were the not the stereotypical grandmothers. Uh they they were all, you know, they especially my grandmother on my mom's side, she was a career woman. She was in World War II, she was in the USO. She was doing other things besides learning how to cook at the homestead. Uh and so this uh what I remember her doing was that I always got to eat as much cereal as I wanted over there. I was always cut off at home after about, you know, five or six bowls. But it, it, it grandma's Five house, or six bowls? <laughs> listen, I was a cereal fiend when You're I was a cereal kid. cereal killer, literally. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and, and so I remember eating a lot of cereal over there. And that was the first time that I ate, like, sort of grown-up cereal yeah. was over there. Like, um, I'm trying to think about what a grown-up cereal would be, like grape nuts. The first time I ever had grape nuts was over there, so... Those are horrible, by the way. <laughs> they're they're not great. They're you not know, great. my granny was your quintessential stereotypical granny. All right, big crazy hair, like the kind of a moo mooish sort of a deal. You know, mm-hmm. super nice. Offer mm-hmm. you, you know, that candy that would stick to the bowl. All mm-hmm. the stuff that comedians use. She was like that. Everything. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. loved her to death. She was great. Mm-hmm. She was great. And but she was one hell of a cook, and she was so handy. She could cook. The, she could make you chocolate candy. She could make you cookies. She could make spaghetti. She could also go down and put coal in the furnace. She could do it all she could because do they it all. had to do it all back in those days because there weren't no one to do it for them. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. All right. Jonah asks, when going for a number two, is it best to first flush the chain and start afresh, or should you just take the risk and go atop of anything that may lurk beneath? I think the toilet situation is different in the UK. We don't have the, we don't here. use the chain generally. Yeah. Although I have used the chain in the past. Listen, if you roll into the uh, toilet and there and the everything is not uh, neutral as it should be, you flush. All right, you don't want to you don't want to listen. That's no good. Yeah. I don't want to gross everybody out, but listen, you want a fresh situation. You don't want to go in there, after, and so that's no good. I don't know how it is over there, but yeah, get yeah, it. It might be a different out. situation in the UK. I don't know yeah. what they're doing with their toilets. Now, there. if you're in deep West Virginia, there's no flushing at all. There's no you flushing at all. You roll into the outhouse, and there's just a hole, so you don't have to worry about who was there before or who's coming after. You just right. go to work. You get the heck out of there. It's number one yeah, goal. Because there's probably spiders in there. And that's there no absolutely are spiders. Yeah. All right, and that's going to do it for Ask the Amigos for July 2021. So, uh, as always, we appreciate your questions. As anybody that supports any of our shows, you are welcome to join our Discord and post a question in the Ask the Amigos channel, and we will be back in August for another round. All right, we will see you then. Until then, adios. adios. <laughs>